Mike Chernoff is going to have an interview, as I pre predicted or suggested last week. He's going to have an interview with the uh, Mets, and it's such a natural. I don't, I don't see how that could break down. Yeah, and so when he leaves, I'm going to blame you because you're the one that suggested it, and uh, it, you know, th they're listening to you. Oh yeah, and you're right. It, it is the perfect fit, and if you can have success in a small market like Cleveland, where you legitimately have limitations uh, upon what you're able to do with your roster, your margin for error in Cleveland is basically slim to none. You cannot afford to pay significant dollars to a player and have that player either underperform or get injured. Whereas in New York and dealing with the budget that he'll be able to deal with there in the Big Apple, that'll be okay. Um, so um, it does seem like a match made in heaven. Um, you know, and the Indians will probably have to search internally for their next general manager like they've done the previous uh, five, six times, dating all the way back to 1987 yeah, when Hank Peters came to town. Uh, fun fact, this every one, Cleveland this one, Indians GM since, yeah. Yeah, this one wouldn't be a surprise, though. So if they've been prepared before, they're easily prepared now. You know, for those who don't know uh, Mike Chernoff at all, uh, you'll like him after I tell you this story. I don't know if you know it, uh, uh, Daryl, that that uh, I, I'm not sure how old he is. He's probably, what would you guess, 37, 38, maybe? Yeah, I, think, I, yeah, I, I would guess he's uh, a, a, a tad younger than I. Okay, so, uh, and his father, of course, is with CBS Radio in New, in New York, right. and, and Mike is living here. Uh, every month since uh, he graduated college, they get together somewhere, whether it's their home in New York, here in Cleveland, some other designated place, and they break out the old baseball gloves from the uh, from from the trunk, and they start throwing the old apple around. Yeah, once at least once a month. That's a pretty cool story. Well, that's the one thing you're allowed to do in 2020. You are appropriately socially distanced to do so, right? Yeah, you throw, you you got to be 60 feet six inches away before <laughs> you, you throw the ball. Uh, what do you think? And, and somebody asked me, well, more than one person asked me, well, what does that mean to uh, Francisco Lindor? I said nothing. This is about Lindor and the Mets or anybody else. It's not about who the general manager would be. Yeah, and, you know, uh, Francisco Linder is not going to be here next year. I'm, I'm fairly convinced of that. The Indians have no choice but to trade him this offseason and, and try and get at least two, maybe three pieces with which they can rebuild this team around going forward so that they can kind of maintain this competitive balance that we've seen under – Terry Francona and Chris Antonetti's leadership dating back to 2013. You're talking eight straight winning seasons, less, I believe, five playoff appearances. And of course, uh, in 2016, they won the American League pennant and got all the way to game seven of the World Series. So it's going to be difficult to kind of retool this thing on the fly. I think at some point you have to take a step back and, and reset. 